sin I would wonder no more I'd turn my steps about Take another route In the house of the Lord Dear friend, right now Reject the Savior no more Just turn your steps about Take another route To the house of the Lord
uh, you know, what, what doctrine I've been brought up in. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of times that we associate that. But, uh, you know, I, I know the Word of God tells me that if I stay uh, straightforward uh, with the Lord the way that He was with me that night, I, you know, I'm going to tell you, if it wouldn't have been for conviction coming by and setting me in my place, uh, you know, what salvation wouldn't have been possible. So when the Lord shoots straight with us, we need to shoot straight with Him. And uh, as we live a life that's pleasing unto Him each and every day, uh, which is made possible by the Spirit that we have within us. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I, that's what I'm thinking about today, maybe uh, along that lines as we uh, uh, see uh, uh, so much is uh, happening right now that it's quick to put in our mind that uh, uh, change is okay. But, uh, you know what, change might be all right uh, uh, for a little bit, but when it pertains to the Word of God, when it pertains to the house of God, uh, uh, we're to remain the same because we've got a God that stays the same. So uh, uh, let's remember that this morning, maybe as we get into the message. And, uh, uh, you know, and I, I guess we'll go to the Lord in prayer right now and uh, ask Him to come by and uh, uh, be a part of, uh, with us today. And I ask you to be much in prayer for us that we do uh, nothing, nothing of ourselves but only what the Lord would have us do. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll change the service today. Dear Lord, we like to thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us, dear Lord. We thank you for another opportunity to gather in your house this morning. And uh, we thank you for each and every one that's here and uh, uh, the, the help to be able to come by and uh, uh, just maybe meditate upon you for a little while, dear Lord. We just pray uh, uh, that your spirit be able to go out, dear Lord, and uh, uh, flow from breast to breast uh, uh, the way that it's intended on, dear Lord, in your house. And uh, we pray that this word go out and uh, uh, removing ourselves from the side and uh, uh, just be able to, to proceed the way that you'd have it go and uh, uh, be receptive uh, uh, to this morning that we can apply it to our lives and go out to the world and better serve you today, dear Lord. And uh, uh, we thank you for the revisions of life that you've given us, dear Lord, and uh, how you've been with us so many times, dear Lord. And uh, uh, sometimes when we didn't think that we keep on going. Uh, uh, you were there to strengthen us and to keep us afloat and uh, uh, you know what? To keep us on that straight and narrow and we pray, dear Lord, that uh, it be uh, uh, all the same as we go throughout the day and uh, uh, maybe throughout our lives this coming week, dear Lord, if you say you're coming for a little while, we pray uh, uh, that you just be with us, lead God and protect us in every way uh, that we go and we'd be uh, found uh, being pleasing to you uh, uh, the next point in time we come together, dear Lord. We pray today uh, uh, for this word as it begins to go out, dear Lord, that uh, maybe there be somebody out there uh, that, need, that needs to hear it, dear Lord, and we pray uh, uh, that they begin to, to, uh, uh, to be attentive to it, dear Lord, and uh, uh, give themselves over to it. Maybe consider it for a little bit, dear Lord, and uh, we pray conviction begin to pour out, dear Lord, and uh, in a way uh, uh, maybe they never, never had before. Uh, uh, we know we talk about uh, changing times, dear Lord, and uh, as we hear changing, dear Lord, we know that sin uh, uh, grows rampantly, dear Lord. We just pray, dear Lord, that the word will go out, and uh, uh, maybe conviction be poured out as it's never been before, and, uh, and, and, and an amount that uh, uh, we've never seen. And uh, we pray that the great revival will come across the land. Uh, and we pray today, dear Lord, that it be done all in your name. And we ask you to forgive us where we failed to come short so many times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, this morning, uh, like I said, it's good to be here and uh, good to have each and every one of you with us. And uh, we ask you to be much in prayer for us uh, uh, that we do exactly what the Lord would have us do. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we've had a thought in our heart and our mind all week. And, uh, uh, you know, this morning we was uh, kind of studying over some different scriptures and so many scriptures pertaining to this right here. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I do believe that we're living in the last times. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I, I believe that with all my heart. And I, I believe we've been hearing that for many years now. And I, you know, Brother Robert stood up and uh, gave the devotion a little bit ago and uh, uh, talking about it with the things that are going on right now that we've talked about a lot. And, uh, uh, you know, what? And uh, you look out and you see how our nation, uh, uh, you know, what I, I believe that what you can see, yes, we are a nation divided, but we're a nation that's moving moving further and further away from God. And, uh, uh, you know, when His ways are, are straight cut, and, uh, uh, they're, they're straight forward to us. And uh, like I said, He shoots straight with us, so we need to shoot straight with Him. The Word of God is laid out in such a way that a man can understand it and be saved. And uh, uh, you know what? Whenever he's saved, I believe that if through that Spirit, uh, uh, God grants him the knowledge in that Spirit to, uh, uh, to, to take in the things that pertain to the Word of God and apply it to his life. And that's the way you and I today uh, need to be seen doing. Uh, we come to the house of God this morning that we may be able to hear a little bit of the gospel, maybe a little bit of the word, and uh, uh, you know what, the Lord give it the way that he has. Most of all, give him praise, Lord, and honor for everything he's done. And uh, you know what, I believe the Lord is deserving of that this morning. I, I believe he, he, it's, necess it's a, necess a necessity uh, for a Christian person to begin to give him his glory. Uh, you know what, God made every living, breathing creature uh, to, to give him glory. And uh, uh, you know what, I believe that with all my heart. But uh, you know, in all these things right here, uh, uh, we begin to see that we are uh, maybe in the last times, the word of God being fulfilled every day. I do believe, and uh, uh, you know what, there's still some things that need to happen, and I believe they will happen. Uh, they've got to happen, and uh, uh, Angel Susan is running away from it in fear. Uh, 
Uh, you know what there's a saying that says uh, only the strong will survive. And uh, you know what I, I'm going to tell you, as I was uh, uh, thinking about that saying, and when we was reading over the scripture right here, uh, you know what, I, I know that uh, in these times that we're living in and things are, are getting hard, it seems like, for a lot of people, and uh, uh, we're facing things we've never been facing before, and uh, uh, you know what, it, it's oftentimes scary, it's oftentimes fearful. We've talked about that maybe last week. But, uh, you know, as I was uh, uh, beginning to think on those things, and I, I know that the Lord made me that night. I, you know, I know He made me when I was a young child. The Scripture was read this morning. Uh, he talked about, about how He knew us from the, our mother's womb and uh, things like that. And, uh, uh, you know, and I know He made me then, but He made me something whenever I was a seven-year-old boy to be able to overcome the things of this world. They, uh, did I not fail in anything? Any failures and shortcomings, they're not of God. But you know what? A man that's been born again, saved by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, he is a new creature in Christ Jesus. Being created to be something that, uh, that is of God. Therefore, God never fails, so therefore we are in that likeness. So you know what? There is something today that I believe that we need to be able to realize, taking maybe off of that uh, saying that we've heard so many times, only the strong will survive. You know, I believe that we're living in times right now that where uh, temptations uh, around on every hand. Uh, uh, sin is out there so much that uh, it's put out there and it's not uh, looked away from anymore. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we, you watch TV for a little while and you're going to see something. Uh, uh, the world makes it more available now than it was years ago. And you know, as that temptation is out there, uh, uh, you know, we begin to realize that more and more people are falling away from the ways of God and going into that temptation and, and giving themselves over to it. You know, I believe today that the Word tells us that the greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. There is an ability to be stronger than that. There is an ability to have a strength that will overcome everything that's going on in the world. And I don't say just a few things. I say everything. I, I believe there's not one thing that you cannot overcome today if you do it in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I believe if you're living for Him, I believe if you're keeping yourself straight, uh, you'll overcome. Maybe not in the way the world thinks you ought to, but in the world that, the way that He sees fit. Amen. You know, I'm going to tell you there's a lot of people that give up that. They'll, they'll, they'll get in that, and I, I've uh, maybe touched on this before, but I, I believe that there's a lot of Christians today that are just too tender. Uh, you know what, I, when I say that, I hear that saying, the strong will survive. I, I believe that the Lord intended on us being strong. He intends on His church to be strong. I'm not talking about the world. The, world, the world's not strong enough because they've already given up to it. And you know what, if, if a man's not been saved and born again, I, uh, he's living in that world. But the church today, those that have been saved by that grace that we talked about right there, those that have been born again, we need to know right now is that we've been created to be strong enough to take these things on and do them in a more perfect way uh, that it may be able to glorify our Father which is in heaven. So you know, I was uh, beginning to meditate on this scripture for a little while. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians uh, about the 12th uh, chapter. I'm going to back up and read the 6th verse right here down to maybe the 10th verse. And this is where Paul is beginning to uh, talk about maybe he had a vision right here and uh, uh, you know what? And, he, and then this vision right here led into a... Uh, a humble state that Paul wanted to present out there, but in humbleness. I, you know what, I, I believe in the humbleness a lot of times in this world is looked at as a form of weakness. But I, I believe that if we realize by the Word of God so many times over, God has chosen a humble man, one that would bring himself down to the point where he could be dealt with. I, you know what I, I love Brother Robert said this morning, he talked about that very same thing. If we put ourselves in the situation, in the, in the present tense of what we are right now, as being useful to God, I believe He'd give it to us. I believe that He would be able to reach down and strengthen us with enough to go through whatever is going on. You know what? I, I look out and we, we talked about how the revival went this past week. We wasn't able to get together the way that we normally would and things like that. Uh, you know what? A lot of things are hurting. And uh, uh, you know what? The way Our way of life has changed up so much. And uh, how easy it is to look at all these things. Everything that's going on, how people are using it, I, and I believe they're using it uh, uh, to an extent right here uh, uh, to bring stuff down. But uh, you know, thinking about this, with the state the church is in right now, and I, and I do believe, I'm, I'm going to agree with what Brother Robert said again, uh, you know, I think a lot of times we do get lazy. And that's just a, that's just a sad fact of it. Uh, but you know what, I, I, that was happening a long time before this virus hit. And you know what, now we're shame on us for that. But at the same time, we begin to realize that uh, in all those things, there's a quick remedy for it, just as there always has been for everything going on in our life that is meant to uh, drag the church down. You know, the church was meant uh, to win. 
The church was meant to, to, to remain here. I, you know what? Uh, we talked about these last times we're in. Hey, the church is going to survive. It's going to make its way out. There's going to be a point in time. Uh, you know what? This world's going to grow more wicked each and every day. I do believe. I, I believe it will wax worse and worse. But uh, uh, there's one thing about it. This church is going to endure. It's going to endure. And when it does endure, it'll endure bad times. And then there's going to come a point in time to where the Lord said He was going to be coming back. And then He's going to take His children on home. So they're going to be here. And you know what, man, when I, when I hear that saying, once again, the, only the strong will survive, uh, you know what, what the fight we're in right now is the fight of eternal life. And uh, uh, you know what, you've been saved by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. You've inherited something. Uh, uh, you've got something now that uh, uh, is going to extend far beyond this lifetime. And uh, uh, So you know what, hey, I'm going to survive. And uh, uh, you know what, so that's why I gave up my boat here, uh, uh, accepting Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And uh, uh, now I have the strength within me uh, about what lives within me by who lives within me uh, and that spirit indwelling there uh, uh, to let me know that any time I come about I, I've got the strength to endure i got the strength to keep on going you know what uh, this word right here tells us in verse 6 it says for though I would desire the glory talking about his vision right here I shall not be a fool for I will say the truth and now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be or that he heareth of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I, per, I pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in, in distresses for Christ's sakes. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know that scripture right there? I've read that many times over the years. And I, you know what? I, I believe it's, it's an inspiration to us today if we really take it for what it is. Uh, you know what, now, and I think if there's any time that we ever needed to inspire, it's probably now. You know what, we get about times in our life where we like to get down and out. We like to take the situations and use them maybe as excuses to be in the state that we're in. You know what, and I, I, I'm, I'm here this morning maybe uh, to point to the direction of is that we're without excuse. We're without excuse of saying that, hey, because of everything going on, we're down to the point that we're, we're so weak we can't do nothing. You know what, I've never been one to, to accept that. I, I've never been one to accept that of myself. If I ever feel like I'm held down and I, and I have no advancement point, uh, you know what, I, I begin to lose interest. I begin to distance myself from it. Uh, you know what, I believe that's just naturally how I am. But at the same point, I look to the Word of God and I, you know what, I thought that it was my natural state, but I believe it's what the Lord instills it within us. I believe He instills it within us that whenever we hit block walls, when we hit those times in life, and I, I believe it talks about strongholds in the Word of God in this very same book. Uh, you know what? Whenever we hit those times in life where we feel like we can't go any further, we don't have the strength to carry us on any, any longer, then we look to see where our strength really comes from. So this morning, what we're going to talk about is my strength. My strength that allow me to go forward. You know, and I, I was just sitting here thinking this, and it, I know that a lot of people quote this, and uh, uh, they, 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 so many times they talk about how the Lord is their strength, and uh, I, you know what, but when it comes down to it, now I'm going to echo something Brother Ron said many a times, and I, and, I, and I believe we need to take notice to it, is you don't know what you're going to do until you're really in that situation. Amen. I can tell you all day long I'm going to do something, but until I'm put in a situation and face little facts, I really don't know what I'm going to do. You know what, I would like to say that I'm going to do things according to the Word of God. But you know what, there comes a point in time, and, there, and I believe it's here now. I, I don't believe it's on down the road. Uh, there's a time here right now that the church has got to put some action to what the words we've been saying. You know what, that's what happens whenever hard times come. Whenever hard times get there, whenever we really have to face a, a, the scenario of life, then that's whenever faith is put to the test. And therefore, you and I have got to make sure that we know exactly where the strength comes from. You know what, Paul right here, as he begins to talk about this, I, I believe he had that vision of paradise and uh, uh, he's seen things that uh, you and I have never seen and I, I believe that because the Word of God says it. I believe the, the Lord wouldn't allow him to write it down if it hadn't happened that way. 
But you know what? Uh, uh, Paul, though, had a, a humbling down point uh, of his own self. Something that he had to, had to come down to this uh, to allow the readers to realize, you and I today, exactly what all took place in order for this to happen. But to teach us a lesson that where we can draw strength uh, uh, from weakness. You know what? I, I don't think that it's wise today to teach a man to be weak. You wouldn't teach your children to be weak. You wouldn't teach them ways of weakness. And you know what? The Word of God doesn't either. And you know, each and everything that you read in the Word of God, uh, yes, there may be times where it kicks us in the shin. It, it puts us where we need to be. It hurts us sometimes. You know what? Feel, uh, that feeling of conviction came because we were breaking our heart. But you know what? The Word of God, if you'll really notice what, what its point is, from cover to cover, what God is intended on by it, by it being the living Word, is that a man might live by it. Therefore, he points him in the direction of forward. So what we see right here is that when Paul brings this out about weakness, it's not teaching a way of weakness. It's teaching a way of humbleness. And whenever a man is humble, then he is made strong. But it says right here that Paul, having visions of paradise, about as close as you could possibly get right here, you know what? And whenever he expounds this, I believe, and this is what I take by why he says this, is that when he tells people this, a lot of times they want to look at him like he's something. You know what? I'm going to tell you, and woe unto any of us that think we're anything. You know what? I'm going to tell you right now, if we think of ourselves, we get ahead and high-minded about the things that we do, uh, we're quick to be able to realize that the Word of God tells us there's a fall coming. A man that would place himself upon a pedestal and to put himself in a position to where he, he can provide his own strength is surely heading for a way of destruction that the Word of God has laid out because the Word of God tells us that pride comes before destruction. Pride is something to get us all in trouble. Amen. Pride cannot be confused with strength. You know what? I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I believe that a man ought to take pride in the things that he does. You do something, you do it well. You do, you do, and, and whenever you do things for the Lord, do it well. That way that you can take pride in working for the Lord. But pride in your own personal self, pride in the things that you do uh, and pertaining to you that you receive the glory of are never going to be of God. And they're never going to amount to any strength pertaining to anything to overcome this world. You will become a part of this world, not, not one that overcomes the world. You know what? I, and I need to echo a scripture we read last week about it. It said that it surely everything in it was going to pass away. It was surely perish. So becoming part of this world, being strong in this world, is not, is not a thing that we need to be partaking in today because it leads us in the opposite direction of what the Lord has intended on us being today. So you know what? Whenever Let's get down into what this says right here. I'm kind of rambling on about that. But anyway, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, talking about his visions, there is given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So you know, we know that there's a debate about this scripture. We know that people have given their opinion over the years uh, about what this stands for, what actually happened, but you know what the realization of it is right now is Paul left it at that. You know what? And, I, and I'm going to tell you this morning, I, I was searching it out and trying to see what, my, what maybe my thought was on it. And uh, some say that it maybe he had a, a sickness or an infirmity of the body uh, that he referred to as this. Some say it was because uh, he was kind of uh, uh, put to the side by the apostles because of the things that he had done. Uh, you know what? There are many different things that have been coming out. But that's not what Paul was trying to do. He's not trying to tell you what's going on with him. He's not trying to tell you uh, about, about I, I, got, I got up this morning, I have a toothache. I've had a toothache for a week now. And it would have done me no good to get up here and tell you how bad my toothache is. Woe is me. Uh, you know what? I can't do this or that because of my tooth hurting. You know, I, so I get to think about this more. Maybe this scripture is meant for me. But anyway, it says right here that Paul was not trying to tell you about it, but he said it had a thorn in the flesh that it was the messenger and the, and the messenger of Satan uh, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above me. So he explains why he tells you he's got this thorn in the flesh. So that, that is what the word, the, the message is going to come from from Paul right here that we're reading. And something I think you and I need to take notice of. Is you know what? Is that when Paul got these visions and he told people and then people are looking to him and I've seen this happening in my lifetime. I know you have too. Where there'll be people and I believe that there are people that are close to God. 
I, you know, I know people that I can think of off the top of my head that I believe have a close relationship with God. And you can tell them out. It's not because of the words they say or how close they say they are, but it's by the life that they live. It's by the prayers that they pray. I, you know what? I believe that's how you'll notice it. And you know what? Paul was being noticed by the things he was saying, but you know, there was something that was there that was holding him back. You know what? I, I'm, a, like I said, a firm believer that God does not hold his people back. But there are certain things that will keep us in check. God has always kept His people in check. You know what? If He didn't keep me in check, I know exactly where I'd be. I, you know what? I, you like to say, well, when we made a statement a while ago, you don't know what you do until you put in that situation. I know. Right now, by the Word of God, by the nature that is within me, because of this old flesh right here, I know what I'd be trying to do. I'd be trying to take some glory for myself. And all glory be to God. There's nothing that's meant for me. Over in the Psalms 145, I'm going to read this real quick and we'll go back to the scripture. But it says, and I, and I got, it, got it that we started at six, but we're actually going to start at three. But it says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, uh, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. And I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works. All men shall speak of the mighty of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of, of thy great goodness, and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. You know, this morning as I was uh, getting into that scripture right there, uh, pertaining to what we're reading right now, you know what, all, like I said, glory is not meant for me. I was not meant to glory. The only glory that I'll ever receive is what the Lord bestows upon me. Yeah. Uh, you know what, that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way that the church is supposed to carry itself. You know what, so many times I think that we get caught up and uh, uh, you know what, and, and you look out in the world today, uh, uh, I mean, there's churches that are taking part in things that they ought not be taking part in. Trying to take the limelight in a place that they're not supposed to. That's how it's boiled down to. This modernization of the church has got in so much into this uh, uh, social media culture. And I know that right now, uh, you know, we, we pointed out that we've uh, made some different streams where we can get out get God's Word out there today. But you know what? So many times do we uh, politicize the church. So many times we put it in areas where it does not need to be and it takes away from the glory of God. Each and everything that we do outside of the will of God takes away the glory of God. And you know what? The Scripture tells me is God's not going to have it. He's not going to take part in anything like that. If you take glory away from God and, put, and place it somewhere else, you have placed it in the ways of Satan. And you know what I'm going to tell you right now? As I was uh, uh, reading this Scripture and it was, it was talking about that thorn in the flesh, and why he had that thorn in the flesh and what it was there for and what the purpose of it was right here to keep Paul in check in a humble state to where he keeps moving forward. You know what? I, I don't believe that this is saying that God keeps us in a hamster wheel to where we keep running ourselves in circles that we can't get any further. I believe that God has always said by the, what the scripture says is that where, uh, that where, where sin is it doesn't matter what grace does much more about. Grace has always been what is sufficient Enough for God's people to make it further. You know what? Your, your, and, I, and my uh, definition of furtherance or, or any gain uh, that we have in life is a lot different from what God's definition is of it. You know, I'm gonna tell you how many times you see in the Word of God to where it lets us know that our definition of something is different from what God is. You know what? His ways are far above our ways. Uh, you know, His understanding is above our understanding. Our righteousness is a filthy rag compared to His righteousness. You know, and as I'm beginning to think about all those uh, many comparisons that are made right here, we begin to see that as this thorn in the flesh is given, uh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Uh, you know, it's given in such a way that it says in the next very part right there, lest I should be exalted above measure. You know what? I know whenever I was saved. I know that that night whenever I gave my life over the Lord, the Lord had intentions on me. He had something for me to do, and He's had something for you to do too. You know, that's why He saved us. He didn't save us to sit in the same place. He saved us that we move forward as His church and accomplish the things that He has set for us uh, from the very beginning of time the, to, till the day of accomplishment. So, you know, as I'm sitting here thinking about this right here, He says that I should, that should, lest I should be exalted above measure 
God, when he saved my soul, placed a spirit within me that gave me a measure. And I believe that measure is there. And you know what? This measurement cannot be measured by the things that I believe that you measure out in this walk of life. I believe it's measured out by the hand of God. And therefore, whenever it says right here in the next scripture, it says, what did the Lord say back to him? These are red letters. So the Lord said it back to him. I believe in this uh, uh, vision or the prayer that he had. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee. So, you know, as I was thinking about this right here and all the things going on in life right now and how sin is so available right now, how it's uh, so quickly for us in, in, in dire times, hard times, uh, that fall upon each and every one of us while we are succumb uh, so much to the temptation of sin that we allow ourselves to get back out there is because we forget about that scripture telling us that sin did abound. But grace does much more. But there is a remedy for you and I today that is within us today because we've been saved uh, uh, that we begin to reach for in this time that gives us the ability to have strength to overcome those times. And that is the grace of God. It's by everything that we've got in life. Everything we've ever done. Every uh, a scenario you ever come to. And the only way you ever made it through it was by that same grace. You know what? It's not talking about many graces right here. But it's by the same grace that saved us uh, uh, when we were a lost sinner out in the world. That hit our knees in a humble like state. The same way Paul did. The same way all the apostles did. It all comes by the same way because it's by one Savior. And it's by His death, burial, and resurrection. You and I have that ability today uh, to have a grace that is sufficient to overcome tax. You know, as we recognize what Paul's got right here, he makes it known right here that he prayed three times over this right here to be taken away. You know what? Something to bother you. You know, I believe that a man today that has been truly born again, you know, this is what my belief about it. I believe you can back it up with the Word of God. But I believe that you are made who you are individually as a Christian because of personal conviction. You know what, if you didn't have personal conviction, if you wasn't allowed to think for yourself, and which I, I believe right now we can relate to this because there's not many people that want you to think for yourself today. You know what, I think there's a lot of religions that don't want you to think for yourself. There's a lot of denominations in the Christian religion that don't want you to think for yourself. But the Word of God tells me by nature, God made me a free moral agent. He made me and gave me the ability to decide for myself. And you know what, by that, that uh, ability that I have today, uh, uh, we begin to see, just as Paul did right here, he prayed three different times for this to be taken away. He, he had, he'd come up to with it. And, hey, he, he evidently got to the point where he didn't think he could handle it anymore. He couldn't take the fact of knowing that this was there. It was holding him back. You know, like I said about me, hey, I can't stand to come to a place where I don't feel like I've got any further. Well, you know what, Paul, it bothered him, so he prayed. That's what, hey, and I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about this right here. Is I, if I could ever think that any of us uh, have an issue today, I'll speak for myself, but I believe we can speak for the church. The issue we have is we don't pray enough. Is we don't call out to God enough. You know what, there are things going on, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you, if you ain't praying about something, if you ain't praying about everything, then you're surely falling. You know, that, that's a big statement right there. But notice what the Word of God tells us. The Word of God is straightforward. It don't beat around the bush. If there's ever a scenario you've had in your life that you didn't think you had to pray about, you were mistaken. Because I believe that it calls it for everything. Every institution of life needs to be prayed about. And you know what? I'm going to tell you, as I know Paul prayed for this three times, uh, the Lord's answer was not what he wanted. It was not what he was looking for. I, I say it wasn't what he was wanting, but I, I believe Paul's heart was in the right place because he accepted it and let us know about it. But you know what he said? He said in the next part, he said, my grace is sufficient. He, you notice he didn't take the problem away. He, he didn't just do it away. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of times uh, our prayer, you know, pay attention to what you're saying. A lot of times our prayer is to completely remove the thing. You know what? There's something going on in our life. It needs to be completely. It needs to go. It needs to get out of it. You know what? Every problem I've ever had in life, my first instinct is it needs to get out of my way. But you know what? A lot of times we know the Word of God tells us that that's not the plan that God's got. That's not what He is looking for. There are situations and scenarios in life that God has placed there. And you know what? And then sometimes it was because of what we needed. You know what? If Paul had his vision right here, he could have ran with it. He could have went a long ways and he makes known that. He, he tells us, hey, I could be. But it's because of that thorn in his place. He was held back. He, he was held back from doing these things. It was not from do, not that he'd get any better uh, and, and necessarily maybe in life. Because I, I believe God wants you to do good. 
I think he will, I think that he gives us the things that we need. Life. And if we really look for it, even though we think we're deprived, and you know we get that woe is me scenario, sometimes we get in that thought to where we think we're deprived. We think that we don't get what, but God has always given us what we need. Always been. You know what? If he, if he didn't do that, then he'd be a God that could lie. And I know the word of God tells me you can't do that. You know, so I'm sitting here thinking about Paul whenever he prays this, and he, he hears his answer back. He says, My grace is sufficient for thee. You know what that meant? That right there hit me like a ton of bricks when I read that again, because I know I've read it before, but when I read it again, hey, sometimes in life we need to stop praying. Stop praying that things get out, out of our way and so much and start praying for a little bit of strength. And the way you do that is that grace come down to you. Start praying that, they, that you, you have the ability to go through it. You know what? I know the Lord. He, he placed something within me. The greatest gift, the greatest thing that a man can ever be given, He placed within me. The greatest strength that's known on this face of the earth is within me. You know what? And whenever I pray for that to go, come out and to do the things, I don't believe there's one thing that we cannot do. There's not one thing that is, that is possible in this walk of life. There's not one thing that, it, that, 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 that this church, that the individuals within this church, could not do if they were doing things in the Spirit. If you and I would hold on to the Spirit and do things in the Spirit, then all things become possible because God behind it. So we know that that right there tells us about a God. And I just read to you over in the 145th uh, chapter of the book of Psalms that talks about a God that has such greatness. The, the, the terrible acts it talked about. And you know, if you uh, break that down, it's talking about the awesome. The, 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 the ones that, that, you know, you see and you really just can't believe. That's how God is. That's the only way you can describe Him. And yet, we're trying to figure out how we're going to make it to the next point. You know what? I get like that. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, it hits me like that. And, uh, and you know what shame on me for it? But that's where Paul began to get his answer right here. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Sometimes you and I got to get out of the way. Sometimes you and I have got to make the step in the right direction. And that step in the right direction is out of the way that the Lord can come in. You know what, so many times we hear, I know that there's another saying right here, you've got to face problems head on, I agree with that to an extent. I don't believe there's any way you can make it, you can go around problems. You go around problems, I, and I, and I think I've talked about this before, you go around problems, you turn around, they're still there. So eventually they're going to come back out. You know what, you've got, you got to go head on. But you know what, a lot of times though, we, we're, we've lost sight of direction. We've got to the point where we think that we can go head on. But the, but the fact is, we step out of the way, get on the right path, and then the Lord will lead us head on. You know what I'm going to tell you? I think there's a lot of people that are making this uh, mistake, which I believe Paul is trying to warn against right here. Uh, you know what? It, it, it ain't the problem. Okay, get this right right now. It, the problem was not the things that Paul was going through. The problem was not the place that he was at. The problem was going to be how Paul was. You know what? Your problem is not because you're living in 2020. It's not because of who and who is not president. It's not because of, of, of how the church is going or how the, the church can rent down the road is teaching. That's not the problem. The problem today can be you. So that is where we're beginning to see right here is that now strength does not come from where you're at. It does not come from those situations you have in mind. It comes from what you've got within and where you're going to put yourself at right now. So you know what I'm telling you, uh, as, as Paul begins to talk about that thorn in the flesh, he could allow that right there to take him over and take him down. You and I, I believe each and every one of us have got that. We've got the same condition Paul had. It may be different for each and every one of us. And you know what, like I say, this is the way I, the way I believe the Word of God is teaching it. Like I say, there's debate over the Scripture, but I believe that he lets you know the reason why it was there. It is because that it kept him in a humble state to where he could be used by God. You know what, how many times I, God has chosen I to, to be able to use things that uh, were not imaginable. And I was thinking this morning about strength. You know what, the, another saying, strength is in numbers. You know what, when you look back to the story of Gideon, it wasn't the case then. You know what, he used very few, a fraction of people to take down what he needed to do. You know what, it, it, didn't, it didn't take a big number. Strength is not a number when it comes to God. Strength is always been equality. You know what, the type of people you got. The type of ones that are serving. You know what, hey, how many times have you heard it said? 
You know what I'd rather have? A, a small group, a congregation, a small group of people that got their hearts right with the Lord than to have a great many that are far from Him. You know what? I'm going to tell you, that, that right there is something that needs to sink into us because strength is not measured out by that way. And you know, I was, I was reading that scripture to you a while ago over in the 145th chapter of the book of Psalms. And you know, at all those things that it talked about that God had, and the, the great attributes that we can lay to Him, you know what? The last scripture read something to us. And you know what? That was what really caught my attention. I'm going to go back and read it to you. But it says in verse 9, it says, The Lord is good to all, his tender, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Everything that God has done, everything that God is doing, and everything that God will do, everything can be summed up and put under His tender mercies that He's had for mankind. The compassion that He had for you and I when we were unlovable. The compassion that He had, the love that He showed on the hill of Calvary when He sent His only begotten Son to die on that cross. That right there is the greatest thing that God has. It's above all His works. You know what compassion today, what, what is the one thing that you and I as, as a church need to have? Where is our strength? You know what, I'm going to tell you what, I know my strength is in Jesus Christ. I know in these last times, as I believe we're living in, right now my strength is drawn from Him. But you know what that gave me that I didn't have? is compassion. Compassion that I may be able to show the world what God showed me through His Son Jesus. You know what, now I'm telling you, I think the problem right now is where we place our compassion, how we're using it, where, where it is. Because you know what, so much, I, 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 and I'm, I'm going to use this old lost and dying world we're living in. We as a church, we've got to stand up and be strong, and only the strong is going to survive. Well, you know, if we're, if we're the church is meant to be that way, then we've got to use our strengths, having compassion. You know what, it's not that we have compassion upon the sinners, I think that's the problem. We, don't have, we have compassion for the sinners, but we do not have compassion for sinners. The problem you see today so many times by Christian people is they have compassion for sin. They, 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 want, to, they want to bring it down. Hey, though we're living in bad times, there's so many people out there, there's so much going on with the world. And you know what, like I say, what do they got to do with anything? Well, hey, you look at how the churches have changed. This modern way didn't just show up. It came because there were so many people falling away from the house of God. People needed another way. So instead of relying on the strength of preaching Jesus, we start preaching something else. We start leading into, into a different direction. You know what I'm going to tell you right now? I, I, there, there's a, there, now I believe that Brother Nathan hit it right on the head talking about that this past week. Uh, you know what? And then talking about all these different ways that people have come from. You know what? I, I've often said the Lord gave me a song in my heart. and It plays there all the time, but it doesn't sound quite like there's some that sound today. You know what? I love this different kind of music, different kind of way of, of worshiping. I, you know what? I, I, I don't. I, well, I tell you, I don't know about it, but I do know about it. The Word of God stands against it. You know what? It tells me that the only thing that needs to change is how I am in the present state. If I'm if I'm down and out enough to where I think I need change, then I need to go. Not not, not what change the Lord's ways. I need to go to the altar. You know what I'm gonna tell you? So many times is that we we think that we're puffed up by the things that we do. We, everything's going good. I believe there's been times where I, I, I believe there have been plenty of times where each and every one of us have been right where we need to be with the Lord. You know, you've tasted that goodness. How, how gracious He is. And you know what? Sometimes we get so caught up in it we forget and lose the fact of knowing exactly where we are. And when we begin to ask ourselves a question, we ask ourselves, hey, what, what, what's going on? What direction do I need to go? What needs to change? Change does not start with our God. It starts with us. You know what? And I'm going to tell you right now, hey, whenever you get back and you begin to realize your weaknesses, just know that Jesus already told Paul. Paul wrote down in the Word of God that whenever weakness is there, that's when he's made strong. You know, so I'm going to tell you, I, I'll read that once again. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That's Paul speaking. Talking about what the Lord does for me. So you and I today, Let's not misplace the compassion, the, the strength the Lord has placed within us, the love that we have, what the world does not have. You know what, I'm going to tell you, there's one thing about it. The world can try to conform and, and, and do all these things and show up. Uh, maybe, I, I, I guess I'd say a false love. You know, there's people today that claim the moral standards. They claim that they can be righteous in their ways. The self-righteous people have always been talking about the Word of God. You know, they think they don't need Jesus. They don't need the house of God. They don't need all these things to be a good person. 
But once again, what do, we, what do we get? We get a comparison of what God thinks. God has made it very clear that it takes a, a more than a good person by worldly standards to make it into the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. So you know what? Today, where does our strength come from? It comes from what we got when we were born again. By that grace that was, that was sufficient enough for salvation that was brought to us, it's for by grace you're saved through faith in Jesus Christ. So today, let's hold on to that for strength right now. There's no reason why we, why we should be going through this world and looking in a doom and gloom state. You know what? There's been many times where God's people have done that. Not, it's not just right now. Hey, look back at children of Israel. They, they's always like that. You know what? The Lord bring them out of something. Next thing you know, they're, they're dragging their feet. Woe was me. All these things are happening to us. We're having to pay for somebody else's mistakes. Things like that. How many times did you hear that in the Old Testament? But God let them realize that by the present state that you're in, is the reason why you feel the way that you do. But you know what? Well, I, 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 like I say, I, it seems like I'm echoing a lot last week, but I believe by the Word of God, what it tells us is that if misery is allowed to remain there, if it's not done away with, it's surely going to remain, and it's going to break you down, it's going to tear you down, and it's going to lead you away. You surely will be in that back sitting state before long if you ain't already there. So let's guard against it. Let's make sure that we're right where we need to be with the Lord. Let's make sure that we've got strength to go on. Only the strongest ones to survive. Let's make sure that we as a church can stand up as a church. You know, a lot of times I, I feel like that there's problems with the world being able to distinguish between the church and the world. Whose fault is that? Because I don't believe it's the world's. I believe, it, I believe it's the church's fault whenever it comes to that. So let's make sure that our strength is strong enough that the world, whenever they look at us, they know exactly who we are and what stock we come from. How we are new born again creature through Christ Jesus. You know what, if we can do that today, I believe we'll overcome anything. I believe it don't matter how, it may, the times might get bad, we might lose our freedoms, we, it might get down to the point where our very life is taken away from us, but yet, the Word of God tells us that in the end, we're all going to be winners. Amen. We hold on to the Lord Amen. Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what, that right there is enough to keep me going. That's enough to give me strength. And I, You know what, there's been many things in my life that I thought I'd never be able to do. And I know that you feel the same. You know what, I, I never, I'll be honest with you, whenever I was called to preach, I never thought. And, you know, even my grandma didn't think I was. She told me one time, she said she had her doubts. And I, that's just how it is sometimes. But, you know, I never thought that I'd be able to. But, you know what, when the Lord does, does, does something, He'll lead you. He'll give you the strength. He'll make you stand up. If you'll stand up, you'll be strong for Him. Uh, and and may, even in your weaknesses, He'll be able to stand up and hold you strong and tall. And I believe the world will be able to see it. So, uh, you know, let, let, let's recognize the word, the word of God says for us this morning. Not any words that I said, but what's right there within the word from God. So, Brother Keith, come on with us song. We're going to be done with that. Uh, but we pray today that we're all be found doing the will of God and uh, uh, placing ourselves right there where we can be dealt with and be used by Him as we stand on the song. about take another route in the house of the Lord.